Hello everybody and thank you for joining me today. We will be looking at the APA Zones uh, forecast and review for weeks of uh, 624 2013. My name is Gabriel Brent and we will be analyzing what the markets are doing, what the markets have done in the past, and how the past can predict the future. So let's get started. All right, so last week uh, we have uh, on the crude oil market, uh, we had a, a level at uh, up here in our, our 99 area range that we are looking to, uh, to retest. And uh, obviously this level is brown on, on last week's video here. So uh, prices visited that area several times and uh, it has stood the test of time. It is a true supply level as in the, the numbers over here are in red. So uh, when price came back into there, uh, anything can happen, but if you get price action, uh, in, in other words, golf engulfing bars, reversal bars, uh, to suggest to the downside, that could happen. Or if you get some very big momentum bars, uh, price action can power through that area. So uh, it, we're just using these zones as filters. You know, we need to look at what happens as price action enters these different areas. You know, so if we look at our video here, um, of actually, excuse me, if we look at our chart here of actually what went ahead and happened, um, let's go ahead and show the price bars on our chart. So we can see the little level that we were watching up here. Uh, that was brown and it came down and it came down hard you know so uh, the the pattern the candle pattern uh, recognition that we see here is like a, a nice little double bar in golf that breaks the the low of this green candle here and it just pushes down all right so let's go look at the uh, the live charts of what they actually look back at the time so um, so we don't have to keep on going back to that video but as you can see uh, after the money bounce of this zone here price broke through there uh, it looks like we had a money bounce on this zone down here which we did get a little bit of uh, of support and price came up out of that uh, four hour zone and then crashed through it hard and very very fast um, and it looks like we've bottomed out here with uh, hammer candles and and spinning tops and dojis and stuff and uh, today we're we're making the move back up into this uh, 95 level which is actually just you know like support and resistance uh, flip-flopping if you will uh, what was um, support over here is now becoming resistance and you can see uh, the 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 high here as it's reaching into this zone here so uh, will price keep on going down even further? That is a, a good possibility if this aqua level can turn to blue and, and, and price holds at that high. Uh, possibly we could come back down here to retest uh, the 93 levels. And you can kind of see as we look up and down the chart, uh, just to give us a good perspective, we, if we break this level, we, we really do have some blue sky um, to the 99 level area. So uh, there are a couple little hiccups that I can see just looking at the chart right now, but um, if this level does hold, uh, we could be looking at 91, 99, 95, um, 91.15, 90.33 is, is uh, down there as well. And then you get into the 80s. So uh, I think that those two aqua zones are going to give us more support uh, than this zone right here. Now that it's been bounced on at least twice, you know, it can come crashing down through here. Uh, but those aqua levels should hold some uh, as some good uh, support in the market if it does uh, go lower here in the bigger time frames. So uh, keep your eye out on crude. And um, it's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking as far as uh, longer term perspectives for this week. All right, right. let's switch uh, markets here and look at the ES. So on the ES last week, uh, this is what we were looking at. 
uh, we were seeing this level at 1642 being retested, um, you know, and uh, and price action was uh, pointing to the upside a little bit. Uh, so, uh, but it was really close to the uh, 1647 level, um, you know. So it's you know the market can do anything that it absolutely wants to do, but let's see what uh, what actually happens. Alright, so uh, we actually don't see um, that zone right there, uh, but here was the, the bar on this chart here, just so that you can see what day that we actually created this, uh, this old example on. Uh, we were looking at the, uh, the bars looking something like this, okay? So as we look at the ES contract, we can see exactly what happened. So um, we can see that uh, this old zone, uh, if we look at our dead zones, we can see the, the dead zone here. It did push up into that area uh, and it busted it just a little bit, you know, went up into this higher area where it based really, really hard. Look at all the consolidation right there, you know. And uh, again, this level is, if we look at how old it is, uh, we are looking at 530. Uh, so we're looking at um, just a, about a month or so, you know, like a, a good 20 days at least um, from when this zone was created, like price action retested it and, uh, and really found uh, a lot of good resistance right there, a uh, good basing period. Um, and... Uh, and then we we broke down, you know, and we we went through all the different levels down here, you know. Uh, it looks like we did find some some good support on some of these uh, previous zones, you know. So uh, that's that's what we're looking for, you know. Um, but uh, now we're looking at uh, 1547, um, just to see what happens there, you know. So. Uh, based on this move from supply to demand and the ideas and principles behind that, um, I would think that uh, 1547 uh, could be very achievable as we we just haven't made it quite down there yet, you know. Um, but it does look like, uh, like that we're going to. And notice that uh, this 1547 uh, level is blue as well as the other level be, uh, underneath that. So um, you know, don't uh, don't expect those to hold if this thing really does really trend down to the downside. Um, it, you can see support here, but uh, make sure that you're not standing in front of the price action bus, because that is never a smart thing to do. But uh, but keep a holistic and a, a complete picture, uh, a big picture perspective as we we look at these markets. You know. So, uh, and obviously we have a lot of space as the, the push down came very hard and fast. Um, so uh, it's creating a lot of space in between these, these different four hour zones, if you will. So uh, that's what we're looking at. And um, let's move on to our next market. If we look at the Euro, uh, you can see we've had a very, very nice drop from from this level, uh, from this four hour zone up here, um, like a double top and uh, all kinds of good basing. Uh, and then the, uh, the big drop from it uh, that happened um, uh, more than likely right around the uh, FMOC meetings uh, that came out last week uh, and really just caused uh, all the markets to drop really, really nicely as uh, that news uh, can accelerate the movements from supply down to demand or, or vice versa, you know. Uh, we really look at news to accelerate the, the, uh, the stuff, uh, just to accelerate the movement of the markets, and it, it does a really good job of doing that. So uh, is the market, is the report going to be, uh, is a good report going to affect the markets in a good way or in a bad way? We never know, but more often than not, it accelerates whatever move is going on from these areas of supply and demand. So uh, looking at the uh, the euro, uh, we were looking at our big weekly charts and we saw the uh, 
34 uh, level was uh, what we're looking for. You know, like 134 is, is where we're looking to go on the big weekly chart. So it uh, looks like we, we did get there. Uh, the 134 level has been hit, you know, and uh, now uh, it looks like we, we got a massive drop, you know, uh, from it. And uh, the the next uh, weekly level on here was like at 127, so, uh, and right now we're at like 130, so it's, uh, it's coming down there pretty good. But this is a weekly chart, mind you, and this is a four-hour chart, okay? So let's go see what we have below us, uh, just so that we can we can see uh, a little bit of the the big picture there. All right. So we have all blue zones down below us, which means price action has bounced on each one of those times at least once. And you can see all the uh, the different levels here. We have about four different levels below us. You know. Um, I think it is interesting that we are basing right now. You can see how price action has just kissed this zone just a couple good times here, uh, just right there on the edge, you know, and then you have this one uh, nice little hammer bar. So uh, this is definitely an area of consolidation. Now, uh, is this time to, to be looking for a little retracement? Sure. Uh, we could possibly see a, a very nice retracement back into to this area up here, you know, uh, and that's totally acceptable, that's totally within the, the parameters of price action to do uh, after it's had a, a very substantial um, move over the uh, the past week here, so, but uh, the it looks like it did make the big weekly move from our, uh, our levels, from our weekly demand up to supply, and now we're going from supply back down to demand. Um, and uh, don't forget, these levels do change over time. You know, supply and demand doesn't stay the same. So uh, be looking for uh, these levels to, to change over time. But uh, the, the big move was completed, and we are, are very grateful for that. Looking at the TF market uh, last week, we, we saw price was really uh, ranging quite a bit back and forth in between the, uh, the yellow level and the brown level on our chart. So, um, and, uh, you know, if the ES fell, then more than likely the, the, uh, the, the Russell did as well, you know. So let's see what happened. All right, so as you can see, uh, price actually came back into this zone right up there, uh, which was just a little bit higher than what we were ranging around. So it, it did a little spike just to, to kind of shake out some people, but it, it did base around for quite a bit, you know. Uh, as you can see there, it, it was uh, it did a lot of basing, um, and uh, it did do the, uh, the engulfing candle uh, right here. Uh, which is is really important to to catch that on the the downside of things, but um, looking for that engulfing candle, uh, and once you saw that, you know, could have uh, got a hold of uh, a big chunk of the drop down. So you can kind of see like we've really powered through a lot of the levels that were uh, that was on our charts at the time. You know, uh, it's gone through the brown zone that this that was there. You know the that brown zone is no longer there. Just beat it, and uh, it looks like it could be going down even further. So we're looking uh, down here uh, to the bottom side for for things to find support down here at the, like the uh, the 9.39 level um, to 9.35.4, uh, and um, we'll see what happens right here. As it, it looks like it's uh, done a little basing period, but. To me, um, it doesn't look like it's done in its movement yet, so um, we will see how uh, the rest of the week transpires, but uh, I could totally see uh, another big uh, push to the downside and, and possibly even further down there to the 900 level, um, so we're looking at about 905 uh, to uh, about 938, so I could see those levels being important as well. So. Uh, that's what I see happening on the TF. Looking at the corn market, uh, 
we, uh, if we look at the daily time frame, we've been talking a little bit about this channel that Corn's been in, and uh, not only did the indexes really uh, get hit hard last week uh, to the downside, but uh, but also it looks like a, a lot of the commodities did too. Like I know gold went down, and and corn obviously uh, went down here on the daily level. Uh, corn is at a kind of an interesting area here, I think. Like it's at the bottom of this channel line that we've connected here. Uh, is as we look at the the channels uh, just hitting all these little swing points um, so it really is down at the the bottom of the channel uh, right now uh, is it going to go lower uh, it's a good question um, nobody can tell the the future for sure but uh, uh, I think we we may see a, a little bit of a bounce here as it's, it looks like it, this could be like an optimal area for a, a stair step effect to be happening uh, basically off the uh, open of this red candle over here um, so nobody I, I can't tell you what for sure corn's going to be doing uh, kind of surprised that it fell with the the indexes there uh, as much but um, uh, I, I would think that corn could uh, just be retesting the bottom of this channel line and going up again so let's go ahead and, and look at the uh, the 240 minutes here And if we look at the the 2:40 minute, let me make sure I have enough uh, days loaded in here. We can actually see uh, where those channel lines are, you know, uh, on this uh, smaller time frame. So that is kind of what we're we're looking at right now uh, on the the smaller time frame. Again, I was looking at the the 700 level. Uh, for corn to to be getting up to, um, and and basically, uh, if you want to wrap it in a nice neat um, shell, so to speak, uh, we are looking for uh, where the the origin of that move happened. You know, so we had some really big red bars down there, and I feel like we've slowly been getting back up there, um, but uh, it uh, it does look to be taking some time, so. Uh, but that's what uh, that's what we're looking at, and and kind of what I'm I'm seeing here as far as things go. So we will see how this continues to go. Um, but uh, right now, still thinking that it it could be possible to to see a, a longer push on corn. Um, especially hope that for all you uh, corn farmers out there, and uh, um, for everybody else, um, you know. I hope that this has been very, very helpful. Uh, we are going to be looking at doing some swing trades with some, some stocks and ETFs here in the future. So please stay tuned for that. And uh, we will catch you again next week as we do our weekly review and, uh, and, and weekly forecast. So uh, happy trading, everybody. Bye-bye.